So, Berto, let's say that for whatever reason, you are texting with someone and that person is thinking about uh, killing themselves. Oh, I know where you're going with this. Yeah, the Michelle Carter case. Jeez. And then you decide for some sadistic reason or troll reason or some other unknown reason, you decide that you're going to encourage that person to right. to complete the suicide. Do you think you've broken the law at that point? Uh I te technically speaking, like, I don't know, like, it's law number 555. Um, I feel like it should be a law. And yeah. if I were making the laws, you would have broken it. How would, would you define broken. it? How would you, how would you write that? Um, it's uh, probably, okay, so like the equivalent would be, if we're in the same room, and I'm enabling you to harm someone else, for example. Like, well, I'm talking oh, about uh, suicide. I know, I know, but I'm still, I'm trying to make a parallel. So what do you call it? Uh, there's that name for it. Um, accomplice, right? Accomplice to a murder, right? Yeah. So um, I would say it's an accomplice to a suicide. Okay. And so, uh, you know, we would carry some penalty because you, it still ended in the, end, in, the, in the ending of a life. And as far as I know, suicide's actually not legal. <laughs> So you were still accomplice to a to a crime. And well, that's a good question. I I don't know if suicide is illegal. I believe it's not legal. Now, of course, you know, it's sort of hard to prosecute. prosecute unless but you I live, guess but, you could prosecute accomplices. Yeah. Right? But I could be wrong. Maybe suicide is not illegal. It's just that I would make it illegal, and I would say, yeah, then you're an accomplice. Um, so you're in favor of this Michelle Carter ruling. I'm not in favor of the number of years, maybe. Uh, that's a whole separate question. Uh, how, how long is her sentence? I think they said some like 20 years or something. Wow. Well, manslaughter, I mean. Yeah. yeah. I doubt she'll get 20 years. Um, maybe it was even 30 years. I might have. It might have been 30 years. Well, what I am in favor of is uh, I think there should be a punishment. Like, I don't know all the facts of the case, but I'm sure we're going to talk about them. Yeah. So let's do that. This is the Psychology in Seattle podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor who just barely read this on the New York Times website about five minutes before we started recording. So yeah, uh, that's me. Who are you, Berto? My name is Umberto Castaneda, and I play video games for a living. So this is the case of Michelle Carter, if you're not aware of it. It's a very interesting case. And normally I wouldn't just start talking about something without any prep, but I thought it would be great to talk with you, Berto, about it. I didn't actually think you would have this point of view, so it's even more interesting now. Michelle Carter, age 20, was found guilty of, in, I think, involuntary manslaughter, Massachusetts, because she had been texting. They have a record of these texts between yep. her and her boyfriend who completed suicide in 2014, three years ago. And there's all these texts back and forth. And it's a long text chain yeah. in which she is encouraging him to do it and reassuring him that she'll be there for his family and almost berating him for for right. being a chicken in some ways. Yeah, th this isn't a case of of someone trying to use reverse psychology in the heat of the moment to try to save the person or something. Yeah. Like, oh, well, then fine, go ahead and do No, no, no. This was systematic. And from what I understand, she, because my understanding is she's religious. Right. I think she thought this was for the better. Right. Because so, he was going to go to heaven yeah. and he was in pain. Right. And, you know. So this is another angle to it that we'll get into. Well, I'm, I'm, I actually have the transcript uh, or the, the text chain back and forth. It's actually really long, but I just want to go over a little bit of it. Because when I first saw the headline, I was like, what? But then when I read the actual text, yeah. I was like, whoa. Like this woman was intensely trying to get her boyfriend to kill himself. Yeah. It wasn't just like, come on, do it, or right. or just one or two texts. I mean, we're talking over several days right. of intense encouragement and also berating, which which we'll get into. And there are several points where he's like, uh, I don't know, I don't I don't know if I want to do this. And she's like, Come on, do it right. now. And and instructed him on how to complete yeah. it. And so very unusual in my mind, but also just 
also unusual is that she was found guilty of manslaughter. The experts are saying that she'll likely appeal and likely will uh, win upon appeal because this sends a very strange precedent, I think, and that could be bastardized to convict people who shouldn't be convicted. I mean, how many people online... Essentially, it's free speech, right? You should be able to speak your mind without having any consequence. That's that's the that's our yeah. that's our premise here. But so, you can't, you also can't you can't not rule a certain way because of of a slippery slope fear because then any anything could theoretically become way worse in the future, and so you got to like draw the line at some place. Sure. Well, and the line is that speech is uh, allowed as long as it's not of a certain class and maybe this is now in that other class but but how many you know for instance online there are people who will troll people and say kill yourself you know yep but you can you can go to court and get someone you can block someone from your life you can have a restraining order on them they can't come within a certain radius and talk to you they can't send you messages right. you can do that and that's right. not even to tell you not to live it's just to insult you right so so free speech is not guaranteed no. when it impedes on someone else's freedom. Right. And in this instance, she is, uh, you know, I think it comes down to whether or not you think he would have done it either way and how much he felt controlled by her. Because if this was like her mother or his mother or his... I don't know, his professor or something, and there's this power to, or his therapist for that matter, then I would say, well, you know, it's a power difference. But in this instance, there's no evidence of that. They're, they're boyfriend, girlfriend. And it's a very strong relationship at that age. Yeah. You but know? does he, does he feel, is he, for instance, let me just, you know, this is, you know, a common analogy to make. You have a girlfriend and you're, and you're thinking about suicide Right. But on this day, you're, you know, you're not going to do it. Right. You know, you think about it, but you're not. And your girlfriend is like, come on, and now's the time. You know, it's, it's, would, would, is it her fault if you actually went through with it? So that's, that's where, okay. Like I, I said before, I don't, I don't know the exact lot, right? But here's the way my, my thought process goes. I start with the following scenario. Let's say it's an adult and a child in a room and they're physically in the same room and the adult is you didn't answer my question by the way well i'm trying to okay so okay fine my answer to the question is there should be some law against that and there should be some penalty involved against uh, against pressuring or cajoling or encouraging someone to end their or someone else's life okay or injure or steal or anything like that then they should have a specific law that addresses yeah that that's, so that that's it, what I'm it's made clear sure that you're not supposed yeah. to do that because like so even and i wouldn't be against that because the chance of of that limiting the liberties of humans is pretty you know it's it's i, I it's not limiting the liberties of humans any more than having to wear a seatbelt every day you sure. know hey 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 americans stop encouraging other people to commit suicide you know, at the very least, just don't encourage them. Yeah. Uh, you don't necessarily have to save them from themselves, but but don't encourage it, okay? And if you are found to have encouraged someone who actually went through with it, then, well, that's the other actual question because is, would it say he never did kill himself? Right. Did she break a law? That's a great question. Because if, because I don't think anyone would say that she broke that she broke a law if he didn't kill himself. Well, here's a question. Let's say you and a buddy are planning to rob a bank and you plan it for 9 months. Yeah. You have the maps, the drinks. You never rob the bank. Yeah, that's against the law. It's conspiracy. I mean, I'm it's not a lawyer. some sort of something, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, then I would say that if for 9 months you tried to get someone to kill themselves, that should be against the law. Okay, but but a lesser a lesser degree. But what if you believe that you're helping someone do something that they've always wanted to do. It, 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 that's where you cannot say, uh, you know, because you can't bring in uh, subjective beliefs into the law. Like, oh, okay, they killed that guy, but it's because their religion says that they needed to kill that guy. That's not what I said. 
I well, said it is. It's he, a belief system, right? It's no. What did I say? You I said thought that, I, what if they think that it's for their own good? Uh, oh, but it well, could I be think, for I think what I reason. meant, what I fe- I think I meant was he really wanted to do it. Sure, that's why he did it. That's the thing that I think is missing in this conversation. Sure, is Conrad wanted to kill himself. That's it, why he killed himself. Now, was his girlfriend a factor in the final decision? I think that's clear. But the the thing that I think people, because we have such a lack of awareness of suicide in our society, it's hard for people to imagine the intense motivation that some people have to end their life, even when it doesn't make a lot of sense from the outside. Yeah. His, I have worked with people like this and I don't know his case history because I just saw this, you know, 10 minutes ago. So forgive me if I'm getting anything wrong, but I would assume that Conrad, who ended up commit, you know, ended up killing himself, completing suicide, he had been, and there's evidence that I, you know, at least it was at least a month long where he had been having intense, high motivation, a plan, right. the desire. And my guess is, is it was much longer than that. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't as a society try to prevent that because often with treatment and time, people get over those motivations and then they thank everyone for helping them later. So I'm not saying, well, it's inevitable. He, he would have done it. The, the thing I'm saying is that the fact that he, he had a girlfriend who was, you know, encouraging him and even kind of berating him it's a, in my clinical mind, when I see this, I think, well, the guy must have been like 99.5% there and his girlfriend was the final 0.5%. I think when people read this, they think she's, she, you know, she's accountable for 70% of the causation of him having completed suicide, which yeah. I there's no way to quantify that, of sure. course. But there people complete suicide in this country all, every day. It happens all the time. It is in Washington state there are twice as many suicides as there are homicides. How many suicides are in the are in the news? I think none. How many homicides? Are, every single homicide is in the news, particularly yeah. when it's a white person. So the it, you know suicide it, people when they get their mind bent on it, it is um if you can't relate to it, fine. But I'm here to tell you that it's a strong motivation. And when people decide to do it, it's it's probably the result of months, if not years, of them trying to get the, uh, you know, I don't know, enough motivation to, to do it. So, it, that, so that's, that's what I think. And that's fair. Uh, what, what I have a problem with is I think we have grown to believe that words sort of, don't have an effect you know, like oh you know freedom of speech should nothing should matter as long as you're just saying it or writing it but um but of course that's not true right like our brains are extremely susceptible to words especially from those that we care about right or those that we hold in high regard or those that have a prominence in our society those kind of things so everything they say actually carries a lot of weight for example if if there was someone uh in the park across the street from me daily y- yelling you know, Hispanics should die. Hispanics should die. All Hispanics should die. And for some reason, it was the park was protected public property and we couldn't get him a noise complaint because he wasn't yelling it loud enough or whatever. That would have a d- dramatic psychological effect on me. Absolutely. Right? Um, so in this case, I say that, that that's kind of where I'm coming from. I was like, yeah, I know words do matter. Words and written words matter, especially from those that are close to us. And when it's systematic and continuous, irrelevant of the motivation, we as a society have decided that we don't like suicide. We don't want people to kill themselves unless these rare euthanasia situations. And because we've decided that, when we could be wrong about it, but because we've decided that, I say, well, if you're encouraging that in that kind of way, you have to pay some price. That's my stance on it. Um, maybe it's too high of a price, but you know, that's my, my take. Yeah, so again, the facts here, uh, Roy's body was found July 13th, 2014 in a park truck in a Kmart parking lot in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, I believe Massachusetts. He was about 40 miles from his home 
and he had used a, a he had died from carbon dioxide yeah carbon monoxide it was from his car or something yeah i th- i think from what i understand he he must have had a hose or something yeah. i don't know but he 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 was found after completing suicide in his car in a kmart parking lot the judge said at the end upon convicting michelle carter cuz there wasn't a jury right it was it was yeah they but it was because the the defense Michelle, asked. They Michelle asked said, I don't want a jury. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting. It's like, why wouldn't you want a jury in that situation? I think they thought the jury would be even harsher on her. Right. Which, you know, uh, maybe, maybe when not. we talk about the Philando Castile case, we realize. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, the judge said, the court has found that Carter's actions and failure to act where it was her self-created duty, where it was her self-created duty to Roy. I don't even know what that means. The, this court has found that Carter, Michelle Carter's, this 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 court has found that Carter's actions and failure to act where it was her self-created duty to Roy, since she put him in the toxic environment, constituted reckless conduct. God, the judges. Okay, <laughs> so she's the judge is saying that Michelle put him in toxic in a toxic environment. And that she felt it was her own duty. But and it was she, reckless conduct. It yeah. was reckless conduct. The court finds that the conduct caused the death of Mr. Roy. That's, the court finds that the conduct caused the death. Well, that's manslaughter. You yeah. know, if you are driving reckless on the road and you accidentally run someone over, that's manslaughter because you were driving reckless that caused the death. So that's, the, to me... That's the bar, right? Like, if I'm wanting or randomly shooting a gun in my neighborhood and a bullet happens to kill someone, I didn't mean to kill that person, but my reckless shooting of a gun caused someone to die, and and that's against the law. Yeah. Texting someone this, you know, this sort of stuff is a far cry from driving reckless or shooting a gun or driving drunk or operating a tr- crane and sort of flipping it around. You know, the, the typical manslaughter is is not uh, this sort of thing. Like the, the case of Philando Castile. Uh, that was a manslaughter charge, was it not? I don't know, but that should have been... A- that should have been a, at least the manslaughter. And well, anyways, I, right, so that's the world we live in, by the way. Yeah. So a cop, Philando Castile, uh, the the cop who shot him, for his uh, uh, Geronimo Yanez, yeah, was found. I think today or uh, earlier today or yesterday, was found not guilty by a jury. Uh, incidentally, the jury what deliberated for a while. It was ten to two, in not guilty. So, right to me, because I was following the case, yeah. and I'm biased, I suppose, but to me, the case of Philando Castile was a slam dunk. Right. You know, listen to the previous podcast to hear a detailed conversation about that. But to have 10 of the jurors, including, so there are two black jurors, yeah. and at least one of the black jurors, if not both, I'm guessing one, based on the way they were talking about it, was on the not guilty side. Yeah. Meaning that they believed that there was enough reason for Yanez to shoot Philando Castile. What, what the problem is that, what, you know, the, the juries are usually instructed very, very specifically on what they should take into account. Now, that doesn't mean that they're still human, so they may ignore it or whatever, but they're, they're given very specific instructions. And when the instruction was that they're told that there is this provision where if a, if a cop has any reasonable reason to feel like they're in danger, they are allowed by law yeah. to use excessive force. Or Great. not excessive, but uh, whatever, lethal force. Yeah. And, Great. And so I'm sure he testified that he saw him, he said he had a gun, and he saw him reaching behind, and that was all he needed. And then enough of those juries might have gone, uh, I guess well, and, so. Well, and, Berto, you forget, he was high on marijuana. Well, that's of course, yes. <laughs> That was a main. Oh, that but was listen, a main defense. I saw a stat. Maybe I don't know if this was real or not. I saw like all these high profile, like fourteen high profile cases in the last few years, and all of them were not convicted of cops shooting 
you know, like it was on a Facebook post and someone posted this one and, they, and behind it was, I don't know, like 14 of them, all these famous names that I remember. And all of them was like not convicted, not convicted, not convicted, yeah. not convicted. So this is just like Rodney King. It's impossible to convict. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, in this situation, it was a jury. Yeah. So I thought, oh, slam dunk. Yeah. The, the prosecution is hitting this hard. Yeah, they were, right? They have hard evidence. They have the, you know, the, the cop, uh, you know, dash cam. Well, they, were they able to see the video? Yeah. Did the jury see the, that, the, that, the girlfriend? The prosecution video? led with the video on, oh the, on day one. They led with the video. Not, well, the video of, of Diamond uh, Reynolds, uh, they also the showed. Yeah. yeah. But no, the dash cam video I is what see. they led with. Because that, to yeah. me, because without that dash cam video, Yanis could have said, "Oh yeah, he grabbed the gun." You know, di- yeah. you know. Of course, his girlfriend is gonna. Yeah. If he's she's she's lying. The I was there. I saw. When you watch the video, apparently, uh, there's no evidence of that. You know, it, you can't, I mean, from the dash cam video, you probably you can't, can't you can't see, see in yeah. the car. So so, but given the way that they presented, yeah, I mean, Yanis was saying, "I could see him going for the gun," or he had his hand on the gun. But even if that's true. <laughs> There were no other signs that he was going to pull a gun out and shoot. And the amount of time he, 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 you know, what he should have done was, if he was truly afraid, yeah, he should have been like freeze, which he never said. He never said freeze. He Put said both don't. Hands on the, yeah, yeah. Uh, or he should have said, if you move, I'm going to shoot you. If you move another inch, I'm going to shoot you. Or you know, some kind of statement. He never says anything like that. Yeah, he just assumes he's going for the gun when everyone both you know boyfriend and girlfriend are going i'm getting my id i'm not reaching for the gun you know i'm not reaching for they're saying i'm not reaching for the gun you asked me to get my id i'm going for the you know is that is that enough reason for a cop to believe that they're threatened because if that's true then a cop can shoot anyone at any time that's that's the lesson here yeah a cop can shoot Anyone for any fucked up delusional reason that they have in their head, you know, I, I'm walking down the street, me, Kirk, 46 year old, half Japanese walking down the street. And I am, you know, uh, a cops, you know, see, thinks I, I fit the description of a armed robber that happened somewhere else. So the cop, you know, pulls over, looks, you know, tells me to, uh, Pull out your ID. Or yeah, something. pull out my ID. And I, now it's an armed robbery that right. happened. And, you know, gun, right. fu- guns were shot. We don't say even the robber even killed someone. Right. You know, I look like someone who was murdered. And so I'm reaching for my ID and the cop shoots me. Yeah. And says, well, I felt threatened. Yeah. That's, this is pr- almost in that vein. Yeah, yeah, no, it really is. Or just take it to another level. I say, by the way, police officer, I have a gun on me. <laughs> yeah. Know? I just thought you should know that. Yeah. And I'm reaching. But I have an ID, a license, whatever. Yeah. yeah. And the cops use, I mean, yeah. it's absurd. It, it the, is. But the, the most, the, what everyone's talking about net right now is they're saying the system failed uh, Philando Castile. I'm not a legal expert. I'm not a social commentator. I'm not a pundit. But in my layman's opinion, that fucking jury failed Philando Castile. I mean, I'm not in the courtroom. Yeah. I'm not there. But I was listening to 74 Seconds, which is this yeah. podcast about you told it. told me about that. And one. they had people in the courtroom reporting every day. Oh, man. Every day. They're, you know, they, 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 this podcast lays it all out very right. succinctly and convincingly. And I went online and, and confirmed and all this stuff. And there's actually a lot of bad information online, too. And from, from what I can tell, the prosecution had an excellent case. They hit it hard. Right. They, they gave it a good shot. They seemed very convinced that Yanez was to blame. You know, it, was, it wasn't just the prosecution going through the motions. Sure, the judge tells the jury, look, you need to do this, you need that. But if I was on that jury, <laughs> It'd be a no-brainer. I'd be like, um, no fucking duh, people. Yeah. Like, no. Okay, sure. That cop thought he was in danger, but... That cop is weird. There's something wrong with that guy. Yeah, because first of all, we I think you could establish, um, it, it, again, not based on actual proof, but it, as a juror and using your own 
head, you could establish for yourself that, look, the guy with no priors and he's got like his girlfriend and his child and the, and the stepdaughter, four year old in the back, it got pulled over incorrectly for no actual reason because he was just fitting a description that he's not. He's yeah. not that person. Right. And he says, I have a gun. Yeah. Just to let the guy know. So, so in what universe is his actual action to pull out the gun? So we can conclude smartly like, okay, he wasn't actually pulling right. out the gun. So we now know that it was at the very least a tragic error of judgment on the cop's part. The that resulted in the, death in the death of an innocent, wonderful right. man. And potentially could have killed the girl too, because apparently one of the bullets went and, through the scene and all these And things. that was, an, he, right. he, was she, he was being charged with three charges. There oh, was yeah. the, I think, manslaughter of Endangerment Flano. of a minor. And then like, yeah, yeah uh, it's a specific thing, like okay. discharge of a firearm, uh, endanger, dangerous in discharge of a firearm or something. So you could at least conclude, okay, tragic mistake. So then the next thing might be, oh, but maybe he is post-traumatic stress. Maybe this cop has an unfortunate thing. And then you could some, somehow decide that it's a lesser charge because of that or something like that. But what I, what I just cannot understand is saying not guilty. Right. Like not guilty is a nonsensical thing. Right. He's not guilty of, of, of what? Of a crime. What is when, he not guilty of? Right. He's fucking guilty. He of was something. wrong about the impression that he got. Right. And he killed the man. He killed him. And he endangered the other two people. And he was still pointing the gun. Yeah. He, he, he came this close to shooting the woman. Yeah. You could see it. And I finally watched the, the, the part where she's, she's still like talking about it and he's pointing the gun at her. Yeah. And, 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 at he, and I'm like, that's so scary. And he's yeah. like, don't move. And she's like, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. The, the moral of the story is for this one particular case is something was wrong with those jurors. I yeah. mean, well, I'm sure we're going to hear more as, you know, because some of the jur jurors are actually talking. They actually interviewed one of the jurors and he was saying that, you know, it was 10 to 2 with 10 saying not guilty and it was not down racial lines. What he didn't say was the two black people were on the not guilty side. So I suspect that means that one of the black jurors was... And all I can say is, what is wrong with that jury? I mean, what? No. How? No, and, and I can't, you can't even give it to uh, racism because, first of all, first of all, the cop isn't actually a white man. He's a Hispanic, right? Yeah. And second, uh, as you said, there is, uh, they deliberated for a while, right? Yeah. And it was split, and one of them was not even, you know, it wasn't just the black versus the whites or something like that. Yeah, it was 10, so, 10 to 2, 10 not so, guilty. Yeah, so I'm now, I'm not going to say there weren't racists in the mix. There might be. Who knows? There's racists everywhere, right? Well, but everyone I, is a little racist. I have a feeling like either there's just stuff that we don't know, or or they really were kind of confused. They, they Maybe the judge confused them or something. Yeah, there must have been a confusion. I almost think that. If you watch the dashboard video, I bet you it sort of looks like what it would look like in a cop show if the bad guy was in fact driving the car. Because you could see you could, you see the angle, you see the cop on the side yelling, "Don't do it! Don't do it!" and then shooting. It might actually look like I don't know, that looks pretty intense to me. Maybe I would have shot too. And until you see from the inside of the vehicle, and you unfortunately only see it after the fact, then I could see some I hate to say it, dumb people looking at that and just seeing it for what it, for not, basically just seeing the surface of the matter. Yeah. And, and all I have to say is there are so many other options. He could have said, don't move. He could have said, freeze. He could have said, uh, he could have, he could have ran, you know, he could have been like, well, I don't know if he's going to pull out a gun, but I, but I feel in danger. So I'm going to run back, yeah, backwards. Dude. That, away from the car. Not only that, shouldn't that be the actual, I mean, I, I haven't gone through the training, but you would think that they would say, hey, by the way, if you think that there's an actual threat, even before you get to the window, like stop, don't go up to the window. Like right. wait, wait for your part, do something. Go some back to the shit. gun, call, for, call backup. for backup. If they take off, do a chase, like, whatever. I, I would certainly at least update the fucking procedures at this point. <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, listen, if you go up to the window and he says he's got a gun, back the fuck up immediately. Yeah. 
back call, immediately. Call for backup. Tell them to get out of the car. Whatever. Like, and don't let the NRA seven bullets yeah. into the car. Yeah. And let then let the NRA have a hissy fit because you've in- introduced a law that if anyone says they have a legal gun in the car, a whole armada has to be brought down upon them. Yeah. Uh, let's take a break and we get back. Let's let's. Uh, have an echo chamber about <laughs> well actually the michelle carter is not echo chamber no, that one's not. <laughs> okay we're back from the break if you haven't become a patron of the podcast please do so become a patron and you get access to hundreds of exclusive episodes in which we do deep dives on various topics also tell a friend or a colleague about us. I, a, a number of you will email me and say that you're telling your friends and colleagues about it, which is uh, awesome. Also, uh, join the Facebook fan group and participate there. There's a good group of group people there. Okay, so let's let's get back to Michelle Carter here. I, I do have one quick question, though. Okay. Am I just missing all the news items where these kind of uh, stopped uh, traffic stop shootings happen to white people? Yeah. No, I'm, I'm actually asking. Like, oh. is there, is it just that it's not being covered by in truth? Oh, no, if you actually saw these statistics, it's half and half. Or, or is it really just this bad? Like, It is happening to everybody. It happens to to white Americans uh, as well. Must sure. be in like the, the poorer areas too. Must be higher or something. To- I, I don't know that specific, but the amount of shall we say, unjustified shootings of Americans by police officers. I mean, just think about it. You have, I don't know, 100,000 police officers at any given time in yeah. the United States. You Well, maybe not that many, but, you know, tens of thousands. And they all have guns. And there's a lot of actual crime where it calls for, you know, legitimate discharging of your weapon. And there are a lot of situations where it doesn't call to discharge a weapon. And there, there's this gray zone right. where it, it confuses the police officers. How many people are going to have an accident in that zone, even when you don't consider race at all? It well, just feels like all the news items have been right. about a black person getting right. shot. Because we have a Black Lives Matter movement that is trying to get some changes done you know that the the changes are to increase awareness to research the topic to properly prosecute and uh i don't know discipline so you know is to provide a deterrent from police officers from doing bad things to anybody uh, to training on uh implicit bias i had i don't know this is like a few years ago a couple years ago I was out with some friends and a friend of a friend of a friend was a police officer and we argued loudly. I think I told you about that. Yeah, I remember you telling me this. For, we were in the middle of a nice restaurant <laughs> and everyone was looking at us because I was screaming at him. Oh my God. For, for probably, no joke, like 45 minutes. You didn't get shot? <laughs> maybe, maybe longer. And he was saying that, and he was a white guy, a uh, cop in Auburn, Washington, and he was he was basically saying he's he there there is no racism in the police force and it's ridiculous and I w- and I was and then I we started talking about like the use of lethal force and he's like well you know it's always justified and and he was basically saying like no police officer has ever made a mistake in the history of the of America so he was basically coming across like that sure and and yeah so I. Uh, I made everyone uncomfortable at our table by yelling at him. But, but, I, but I just couldn't. I just could not stay yeah. quiet in that situation. I've seen similar or I've had similar conversations or seen similar conversations with folks in the military. Not all folks in the military, just some folks in the military. And I think part of it is that you sort of have to believe in this precise cause that is unfailing because you're 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 told you know you basic training and then through all your training all these things you're told you got to follow these orders exactly you can never veer right and when you get told to shoot you're gonna have to shoot yeah you're gonna have to kill yeah and you can't sit here and question authority and all these things yeah uh in the military yeah sure which is another debatable topic but the police force are not the military yeah, no, I, I know. I just, I, law, I, 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 I mean, I understand what you're saying, yeah. but it's a culture yeah. of reinforcing 
justification yeah. of your own privilege and, right. and of your and of justifying your actions and basically of staying out of trouble. Anyway, so going on with Michelle Carter, uh, uh, who was who was convicted guilty of of manslaughter. Uh, she says, so early on, she was actually, oh, by the way, I just also want to mention that Bill Cosby uh, had a mistrial because of a hung jury. What? About his, uh, yeah. Was it the main trial or? I'm not sure, but I'm just, uh, I'm just, that's another <laughs> weird situation. It's like, what? But anyway, so Michelle Carter, in the beginning, she's actually giving a lot of uh, messages to Conrad saying that, uh, to not do it, you know, and and she, yeah, he he's like, yeah, I want to. This is like in June uh-huh. of 2014. He's saying, yeah, I, I want to kill myself. And Michelle is like, oh no, no, don't do it. Don't you know? There you have so much to live for. She's saying all the things you would think are typical. So just reading from the transcript here that I can find online here, and it's actually really long. And I encourage you to look it up because it's 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 really interesting. But anyway. So the the night of him actually completing the suicide. So the texts go over a number of of weeks. Yeah. And in the beginning she's you know she like I said she's encouraging him. She's saying all the normal things you think someone right, would say. Right, don't right. do it, don't do it. But then at a certain point she starts she changes her mind and now she's like encouraging him. She's saying, you know, uh, so here here we go. So Conrad says, "I'm home." Michelle says, okay. Conrad says, ah. Michelle says, what? Conrad says, I don't know. I'm stressing. So at this point, he's saying, I don't know. You know, I'm stressing yeah. about suicide. Michelle says, you're fine. It's going to be okay. You just got to do it, babe. You can't think about it. Conrad says, okay, okay. I got this. Michelle says, yes, you do. I believe in you. Did you delete the messages? So this is interesting because I think she's like, wait, am I going to get in trouble for this? Yeah, see that right there must have hurt her right. quite Con- a bit. Conrad says, yes, but you're, but you're going to keep messaging me. Uh, Carter, uh, Michelle says, I will, I, will, I will until you turn on the generator. Oh, I think he had a generator in his truck or something. Uh, and that's where the carbon monoxide came from. Maybe right. he put the generator in with the, with the, inside the truck with him yeah. instead of turning the car on. And by the way, does this mean he didn't delete the messages or is there a way for them to get the message? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't okay. know. Uh, Conrad says, okay, well, I'm bringing my sisters for ice cream. Michelle says, so you will do it when you get back? So again, I just want to say like, this is just this, I'm just reading an excerpt. Yeah. This is a lot of back and forth. She is on a mission. Yeah. You know, Conrad says, yep, I'll go right there. Michelle says, okay. Conrad says, I love you. Michelle says, I love you so much. Conrad, smiley face. Carter, 33. What does that mean? 33. Um, Heart, heart. I don't know. No, maybe it's a sex thing. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Conrad says, ha ha, what are you doing? Michelle says, nothing really, just resting. Conrad says, okay, ha ha, I'm procrastinating. Michelle says, yeah, ha ha, I know, are you back? Conrad, yep. Michelle, so it's time? So, you know, Michelle's like, so it's it's time? Yeah. Uh, uh, Conrad says, oh, it's been time. So, you know, right there, you know, Conrad's saying, oh yeah, it's been time, you know, I've 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 been wanting to do it for a long time. At least that's how I read it. Michelle says, "Are you going to do it now?" Conrad, "I just don't know how to leave them, you know, talking about his family." Right. Michelle says, "So you're going to so you're going to go to the store or something?" Conrad, "Like I want them to know that I love them." Michelle says, "They know. That's one thing they definitely know. You're overthinking. You're overthinking." Yeah. Conrad, I know I'm overthinking. I've been overthinking for a while now. So right there, you're just like, how serious was Conrad? You yeah. Know? Michelle says, I know. You just have to do it like you said. Are you going to do it now? Conrad says, I still haven't left. Ha ha. Michelle says, why? So, yeah. you know, everything. Conrad, leaving now. It's not like they're talking about anything else, or at least they're not showing us those text messages. Yeah. Michelle, uh, Michelle says, so Conrad, so, you know, I still haven't yet left yet. Michelle says, why? Conrad says, okay, I'm leaving now. Michelle says, okay, you can do this. Conrad says, okay, I'm almost there. 
And so you can see that it's very, you know, uh, it's, it's very, uh, let's see, let me read an earlier section here. Um, okay, so Conrad says, okay, I'm going to do it today. Michelle says, you promise? You promise? You promise. What? Yeah. I mean, this is, okay, my position is I'm not quite so sure she should go to prison for this, mm -hmm. but it's at the very, so forget the legal system. This is very odd, and, and I, I don't even understand the, the position here, you yeah. know, like what is going on in your head right. when your boyfriend is thinking about completing suicide and you're like, you promise? Like you're talking about like, you're going to take me to the fair, remember? You yeah. promised? You promised. Like it's a gift to her yeah. that he's killing himself. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to do it today, Michelle. You promise? It, Conrad, I promise, Spade. I have to now. And to me, like, it, it feels a little bit like those stories that I've read about uh, kids that get into witchcraft or Satanism or things like this. And then they sort of get into like this and, you know, their conversations get to be like this where they're like, oh, are we going to go kill someone? Yeah, we totally should go kill someone. Right. And all these kind of things. Yeah, it's very much like that. And evidence that these are not mature individuals. Right. You know, so uh, so you promise, Conrad, I promise, Spade, I have to now. Michelle, like right now? Jeez. Conrad, where do I go? Oh, Michelle, God. and you can't back, and you can't break a promise and just go in a quiet parking lot or something. Conrad, okay. Michelle, go somewhere you know you won't get caught. You can find a place. I know you can. Are you doing it now? Later that afternoon, the conver oh, sorry. Later that afternoon, <laughs> the conversation continued. And by, by the way, was there any information about did they not spend any time in person? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, just, you know, millennials, right? Yeah. Although th this is probably the next generation. What's the, anyway. Yeah. Uh, Conrad, I'm determined, Michelle. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy to hear that. I mean, she sounds like a mother trying to convince her kid to, you I don't gotta know. You got to go register for that class. You yeah. Have, you promise you're going to do it. Yeah. I'm determined. I'm happy to hear that. I'm happy honey. to hear that. Conrad, I'm ready. I'm, I'm there with you. Uh, Michelle, good, because it's time, babe. You know that. When you get back from the beach, you've got to go do it. You're ready. You're determined. It's the best time to do it. Conrad, okay, I will. Carter, are you back? Conrad, no more thinking. Michelle, yes, no more thinking. You, you need to just do it. No more waiting. Conrad, on the way back, I know where, I know where to go now. Carter, where? Conrad, a parking lot. There is going to be no cars there at nine o'clock. So that's, that's when I'll be found. Uh, Carter. Okay. Uh, Michelle. Okay. Perfect. When will, when will you go home? 10 minutes, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Conrad says, skipping down when they open the door, they won't know it's odorless and color. So Conrad is like wondering like, well, when they find me, there's going to be some weirdness. Michelle says, you're overthinking. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> so, it's it's um he's so clearly trying to back out. He you know, well he's he, trying to find all these excuses. Yeah, he he appears to be it it it's like again yeah if, if you didn't know the context, if you just read this transcript, you would think I already missed three days of class. I don't think I should. No, you're overthinking. Just yeah. go and sign up and start the class. Right, right. But what if the professor said no? Yeah. <laughs> Do it. Do it. Yeah. You owe it. You know, yeah, like you, you, you said, promised. you promised me. Like, it's bizarre. So, I think uh, the little bit I know about this case, is, so that's what I should say right from the start, is this is someone who looked on the internet for five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, before 2014, Michelle was really into... Uh, Glee, the TV show. Oh, okay. And uh, if you're familiar with Glee, you know that the the lead actor, the killed lead himself. actor, uh, killed himself. Yeah. And I didn't know this, but they uh, the lead actor in the show was uh, had a girlfriend. Yeah. And they were in real life girlfriend. Yep, that's right, Michelle, whatever her name is. So, oh, and her Rhea, name is Michelle. Rhea Michelle. Rhea Michelle. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So 
Michelle Carter was obsessed with this TV show uh-huh. and obsessed with that boy, oh, and obsessed man. with the girl. And and when that that kid uh, killed himself or young man killed yeah. himself, <clears throat> there was a a a lot of press coverage that. I was completely unaware of, but I'm sure a young person who was super into Glee. Was, I was totally into it, and I I was shocked and saddened by okay. that. Yeah, and the girl, the so and so Michelle girl, yeah. got a lot of sympathy naturally. Right, a lot of she, she, you know, she was a big deal anyway. Oh, I see. But because her boyfriend on the show and her boyfriend in real life, yep, had killed himself, she became some kind of you know huge yeah, person yeah yeah i could see so you think she was sort of so thinking so the the parallels yeah. are a little eerie right so maybe she maybe it wasn't spoken in her head but maybe she was like i could be famous i could be famous yeah to me uh, based on the little i can find that's the only viable explanation for this because unless she's some sort of psychopath who yeah. who actually takes pleasure in people being killed, which right. is possible, the only thing I could think of is that she was really looking for. You know, she in her mind thought, uh, "My boyfriend is suicidal, and I love him. And what if he what if he kills himself?" And at, and at first this is this is you know not good for her and she's like no I don't want you to kill yourself this is I you know so she's telling him don't do it don't do right. it right but then eventually she starts wondering well I think he's probably going to do it at some point and then she's probably started thinking in her mind well what would happen you know like because this was a daily thing I think for Conrad I don't think it was just like yeah. ebb and flow you know it was it was something that I think was a common presence in his life this these suicidal thoughts and so michelle that his girlfriend is like you know i'm just guessing here total speculation is that she's going over in her head like well what would happen how would it happen you know what da 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 huh it well when he eventually does it because i'm pretty sure he's going to do it is is my guess is what she thought it'll end his suffering and he can finally rest in peace and since i'm religious he'll go to heaven right and Which, by the way, she should have been told that. Oh, that, wait! Did they abolish purgatory? I can't remember. And well, plus, I don't know if he's Catholic. Yeah, he's probably not. But I thought that there was a thing when I was growing up. They're like, if you commit suicide, you're not going straight to heaven. Well, some people would. I remember say that you, it's an automatic. You go to hell because you committed murder. You know, uh, <laughs> and you went against God's wishes. Right. So it's and you weren't able to confess your sins because you know. But anyway, uh, from what I can tell from the back and forth, she thought he was going to go to heaven and it would end his suffering. And so she's thinking, okay, well, if we get to the next phase here and it'll be sad, but he'll go to heaven, it'll be over finally. And I can actually get how, I mean, think of the tension I'll get. I'll be on the news. I can post, think of the posts I can post on the internet. Now, this is all speculation. Who yeah. knows? But to me, it's the only it's the only justifiable cause of all those of all that badgering that she had. And, and you don't mean justifiable for morality. No, you I'm mean, saying like it, the wh- only explanation. What would make her? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because to me, it at the very, like if she didn't care, if she didn't love him, then she would, she wouldn't respond to us. She text. might just break up. She might just, yeah, he's, he's, he's boring he's me. Weird. He's just always talking about death, whatever. Right. Or you just be like, oh, I don't know. Why don't you just do it? Lay off me. You know, yeah. people will say that. They'll be like, you know, I'm sick of hearing this. Yep. Why don't you just do it and get over? But yep. no, she is, she's saying, I love you. And yep. she's like, you can do this. I believe in you. You promised me, you know, every action, you know, she's, she's actually doing everything right. If she was saying, don't do it. <laughs> right. Like that's what she should have been doing, you know. Like heavily attentive. Like, I love you. you no, know, you promised you're gonna stay alive for yeah. me. You're gonna do all these things. Right. We're gonna be in Disneyland next summer. You told me. Right. So, the now the the rhetoric in it will be uh, texts kill people, <laughs> or another reason why texting is bad <laughs> for kids. You know you're gonna hear that kind of. Thing. I mean, in the Flando Castile case, you have marijuana is bad. Okay. Right. Right. I mean, come on, people. So, you know, or, oh, man. you know, kids these days with their 
texting, you know, like I, I will say what what I would invest in. I mean, I might just do this anyways, but if I granted if you don't have the money, you don't have the money. But I would just have a constantly live streaming to Facebook Live when I'm in my car, you know, or when I go out at night. If I were in those communities, if I were black, I would just always be live streaming. So if I get pulled over, the camera's already on. Yeah, we it's talked about streaming. well, we talked about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About one day uh, you could affix a 360 camera yeah. to the top of your head, like one of those, uh, one of those antenna, or like one yeah. of those, one of those hats Little with beanies. the propeller, <laughs> and you're always live streaming. But but I, I guess maybe this shows that it might not matter, right? So you still like, get, you'll still get killed. So here is the video. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard to no. It's not like it's 1080p. Like yeah. look at yeah. You can see the beads of sweat. But, you know, he was high on marijuana, so. Yeah. Um, uh. So, uh, there's a couple other points here that I found is, again, early on when he was talking about suicide and she was saying, don't do it, uh, she, he, uh, Michelle wrote, I'm trying my best to dig you out. <laughs> so, Michelle is like, I'm trying to, to get you not to kill yourself. Right. Michelle's like, please don't do it. That she, was early on. Yeah, early on, the text show... Very caring, very typical, right. you know, kinds of things. And then uh, Carter, 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 no, uh, Conrad, the boy who killed himself. Uh, he said many, many things that indicated he was definitely, he was hell bent on committing, on killing himself. But there's this one line that's very definitive. And he says, I don't, so she's saying, I'm, I'm trying my best to dig you out, honey. And he says, I don't want to be dug out. And in all caps, he says, I want to die. Mm -hmm. I want to die. So I just want to be clear that Conrad was adamant about dying. Well, at one point in one text message. What? At one point in one text message. Well, And potentially, because that could just be overexpression from a teenager. Maybe, but over a long period of time and my experience of people who are thinking about suicide, I would say his is pretty severe. And now, yeah. what I will what, so I, I don't think this is an example of kids these days or texting is a bad thing. What I think this is an example of is that we don't have services for people who are suicidal. Right. And we don't have enough awareness of suicide and we don't have enough things in place to help people like this because where, where were the professionals, you know? Yeah. We, uh, for Michelle, where's her therapist to help her guide through the, you know, guide yeah. her through this situation? Um, so that to me is is the real tragedy here. Not that we have, you know, kids these days and they're texting. Another thing here is yeah, because Romeo and Juliet had no texts. <laughs> yeah. Here, here we have uh, a, a found online. It says earlier in the trial, a psychiatrist testified that Michelle was delusional after becoming involuntarily intoxicated by antidepressants. Michelle was unable to form intent after switching to a new prescription drug, prescription drug months before Roy's suicide. Oh. So what this psychiatrist was testifying apparently was that her antidepressants made her crazy, so that's why she was making these texts, which I just find to be another ridiculous thing about this case. But it is interesting that she was on antidepressants. Right. Because I had heard that early on, b uh, both of them had talked about the idea of suicide, and she like changed her mind or something. Yeah. That's something I read. But um, Right, so another kind of angle, this doesn't justify it, but another possible motivation is that she wants to kill herself yeah and she understands that you need encouragement now i'm not saying this is right but i'm just saying in someone's world where suicide is a is actually something good you could you know in your mind find yourself being loving while encouraging someone to do it you know yeah. like think of it, it i'm not saying this is justified i'm saying that it's understanding people's context. So if you had a spouse who was terminally ill and was definitely going to die within four weeks and it was going to be painful and right. terrible and they wanted to not go through that and they just wanted to, you know, 
piece out early, a right. month earlier. And they were thinking about, you know, uh, uh, assisted suicide. Right, right, right. And you're the spouse and they're looking to you for support. Now you're not going to go like, you promised that, you know, yeah. you're, you're, but you're going to, at, at the, you know, the, your, your part, you know, the, per, your, your spouse who is terminally ill, they're going to be like, well, I don't know. And you're going to be like, well, you know, it's up to you. What, you know, what do you want to do? And they're like, well, I think I want to do it. I'm pretty sure I want to do it. And you're like, okay. And then for like, you know, a week, they're like, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it. And then they're like, oh, and they're like, yeah, I called the doctor. The doctor's coming over. Uh, we're going to do it. And then the doctor knocks on the door. And your spouse, who's terminally ill, turns to you and says, uh, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm kind of, I, I'm scared. I don't know what to do. Right. Well, as a spouse, there's who, there's no right answer to the situation. There's, right. This is a totally screwed situation for you, right? Right. But you could imagine someone being like, it's okay, honey. Uh, you can do this, you know? Or, or another reaction would be, well, tell them to go away then. You know, there's a lot of reactions. But one of them is possibly encouragement of like, well, for the past week, you were you were definitely going to do this. We can tell them to go away, but you definitely said you wanted to do this, and I, I know you can do this, or something like that. Now, I don't know what I would do in that situation. Right. <laughs> I'd probably say, you know, fuck off, doctor, go away. Um, but but I wouldn't fault someone for 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 lovingly encouraging someone in a situation like that. I, I just, I, I still group it like this. Uh, I mean, it's, it's first of all, of course, an extremely different situation because this person's medically ill and will die and blah, blah. But, um, although you could say the depression is, but what I was thinking was this, you know how uh, some people, yeah, they have cancer and they're like, I'm going to live my last six months. I'm going to go f- jump off of airplanes, right? I'm going to go skydiving. I went Rocky Mountain climbing, all that stuff, right? You know the song? No. All right. Um, Well, imagine you're the spouse and the person, you know, they're like 85 and they've got cancer and they're going to go jump out of an airplane in a parachute. And they tell them like, look, you got to sign this waiver. Like, you're not supposed to do this because you could die of a heart attack. It's like, dude, I'm going to die in five weeks. I don't care. Then right as they're getting close to doing it, they they go, they're at the airport. It's like, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Or they're in the plane. They're at the. They're at the. They're at the door. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't do this. And they're like, I, I can't do it. And then know? the wife is what? Ah, yeah, you can. And he push, She pushes him out, and he has a heart attack and dies. Right. I am sorry, but it should be his decision, not hers. Interesting. So I'm well, not if, saying. You know, well, if you, no, well, if that's not a good analogy because she pushed him out the door. Well, fine, fine. But she, but she encourages. So verbally, him, verbally she, she says you can do this. And of course, the penalty. If there weren't, first of all, if there are eighty some year olds and he had cancer and all these things, who's gonna convict? I don't know. But if we were being like super strict by the law, I would say in my world there would be some law about wow. cajoling wow. or or manipulating someone to do something that is not their so actual decision. She should go to jail because no, she I'm, encouraged no, I, him no, about No, I'm not saying jail. I'm not saying what That's, the punishment is. I'm saying, oh, look, maybe it's a $25 fine. I don't know. But well, what I am some saying, legal there is a legal consequence for com- for using any number of manipulation techniques, whatever, to, to convince someone to do something that they don't actually necessarily want to do that will bring them or someone else harm. Yes. Yikes. Yes. Yikes. Yes. Well, let us know what you think. You can email us at contact at psychologyinseattle.com. We should give you your own email address at some point, maybe, because... Oh, bye. Because people... <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> people always... Because e- I'm the one who right. looks at the emails. I can do you ever look at the emails? I do. Well, I, sometimes when I'm trying to look at the size and the storage and the things oh, okay. of the of the me- emails. But um, I don't often know. Okay. Well, so here's the, here's the final word. Suicide is real and it is happening all around us and it can be prevented. Some of them are not easily prevented, but some of them are. And from the little I understand about Conrad, I think this could have been turned around. But we don't do enough to help people like Conrad. We as a society sweep it under the rug. We don't fund mental health in general. We ostracize people. We, we push them, marginalize them, put them in the closet so they can't reach out. And that's the story here is the, there's a tragedy of a young man who 
ended his life early when he, he, if he had treatment and I don't know, maybe he did have proper treatment, but I'm guessing not. He, he could be alive today and recovering and doing better. That, that's the story here. On the side, we have this interesting component of his girlfriend being highly cajoling and not being the best of girlfriends and perhaps doing so to get attention. And then another asterisk to this is she was convicted of manslaughter and might go to prison, which is, you know, just an interesting uh, thing. But when we look at the law, Bill Cosby, O.J. Simpson, Philando Castile, Michelle Carter, uh, all the other ones, you know, the Casey case or what was her name? Um, we see that the legal system is erratic. It's erratic. Uh, that's it's, the it's, fact. It's based on, it tries to uphold standards of behavior, but it's governed by human beings. Yeah. And it is uh, not, all, and when we have c- cases where there's, there's a little uncertainty, uh, you know, like in the Flando Castile case, if Yana has just walked up to Flando Castile and shot him in the head, you know, just walking down the street for no reason, then he would have been convicted. So really, it, well, God hopes. Um, but given the fact that it was, you know, shall we say, slightly gray, you know, yeah. just a tinge of gray in there given the fact that Philando did have a gun, which is not a gray zone really, but... Especially after he announced that he did. Right. But it's apparently enough of a gray zone for the legal system so that, you know, you get get people that would be upset on either side, really. Well, and did you see the... Very proud, actually, the the whole NRA came out against the the result of the case and they're starting this whole fund for oh wait no i must have dreamt that last night yeah because don't you think we talked about this before yeah wouldn't they be like up in literal arms yeah like wait a minute yeah he said he had a gun he had a legal oh my god because think about it wouldn't the implication be that anyone who carries a legal gun and says that could be shot so so let's so let's 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 go i don't want to go too down for us jack but you know it's a speculation which is what we're doing and this is a psychology podcast and i'm a psychology expert but i'm not an expert on this sort of thing so just take it with a with a grain of salt but imagine we have a um a uh what do you call him (laughs) Minute, not the minute men. The minute men, right? The or the, the the people that took over that the tea tea party. Oh, tea party. Okay, no, say it's a tea party person. Sure, NRA member. A, you know, gun has thirty guns. I'm picturing like mi- mixed uh, black <laughs> yeah, Latino, a white guy. Oh, white guy. Okay, a white guy. I mean, there are black tea partiers, but you know, yeah. it's a, a white tea partier. He you know drinks Bud Light. He you know watches NASCAR. You know, he he lives in. I don't know, Kentucky or Alabama or something, you know, these people are all over America, but let's just, just put them somewhere down there. And he gets pulled over during the Obama administration. Let's put it in that situation. So this is last year. And he announces he has a gun and gets pulled over by Hispanic, by, by Hispanic yeah. cop and the Hispanic cop. Let's put him, let's make him a black cop. The black cops, uh, uh shoots him, kills him. Same situation. Same situation. The NRA would, and all the Republicans... Lose their this, minds. This is one of their hot-button issues, you know? Yeah. The, the, the whole reason why the uh, Timothy McVeigh bombing of Oklahoma City right. was basically this. Yeah. The uh, David Koresh compound uh, d- disaster was basically... Trying yep. to get guns. They yep. were like, it was basically like, look, you have too many guns. We're going to take your guns. This would have been them. You see, Obama's coming for your guns. Obamunists are yes. coming for your guns. And now they're, they're not coming. They're shooting to kill. They're shooting to kill just because you have your right yep. to have Let's all get guns as our NRA right and let's walk into Starbucks. Yep. This is what they would do. But for some reason in this sense, and maybe they are, you know, we're not scouring the NRA. Yeah, maybe for, I'm wrong. Maybe I'm... the NRA is coming out. But. 
This is just another example of partisan. Now, I'm not saying this is just Republicans. Democrats are equally as likely to be partisan uh, when it comes to anything political. So I'm just saying the, the partisan politics for everybody, I'm guessing all around the world, but I know American partisan politics. This is just an example of motivated reasoning, inconsistent uh, yeah, you- policies, and it makes everyone see the hypocrisy and makes it so it's hard to respect any group for any belief. But, but, but I see, I think, I think you can't call, well, you can, you just did, but I would never call it an even, an even fight. Cause if, if we would have had those instances, during I'm not Obama. saying it's an evil fight. I'm saying, cause there's no way to quantify that. And as a Democrat myself, I'm obviously biased against Republicans. And so I'm going to notice and be fed, frankly, the, uh, instances in which Republicans are inconsistent. And we're talking about extreme Republicans. We're talking about the extreme right. The extreme right. No, I'm talking about every, Re- I'm talking about every American. I'm talking about sure. like 99% of Americans or anyone who follows politics even remotely. And I'm talking about, you know, soccer moms, these kind of people. Yeah. Have fed to them and have a, have a very strange black and white thinking when it comes to politics and extreme motivated reasoning. I should say uh, in conclusion here, because I wasn't planning on talking about politics, is we're two non-experts talking about stuff off the cuff, which is fine. Also, I labeled myself a Democrat. Normally, I label myself a non-anything. So I tend to vote Democrat, but... Yeah, I'm an independent. Well, that does it for that episode of Psychology in Seattle. Thanks for joining us out there. Please take care of yourself. and take care of people who have suicidal thoughts and definitely don't encourage them to do it because neither you nor they deserve you not doing that. 